one of the most profound statements you will ever read, or if not the most profound statement you will ever read, comes from the Avaduta Gita by Lord Dattatreya. Now, in a previous video, I mentioned how the Avaduta Gita is the most dangerous spiritual book in the world for many reasons. And I recommend going back and watching that video if you have a chance. And this translation here is by Swami Chittananda, but the quote I will read today is from Swami Abhayananda's translation. And as I said, this statement and quote is probably the greatest or most profound statement you will ever read in world literature. I have no birth, no death, and no duties. I've never done anything, either good or bad. I'm purely Brahman, beyond all qualities. How could either bondage or liberation exist for me? Now, to the untrained mind, this quote seems confusing and does not make a lot of sense. But this is where you have to understand the nature of reality itself and what it's alluding to. Now, the Avaduta Gita is always pushing you towards that beginningless, endless state of non-dual pure consciousness. The whole text is driving you back towards your ultimate nature, your ultimate state within that, where you were neither born and you will never die. The body does. The body has a birth, the body dies, but the non-dual pure consciousness can never be born and will never die. And that is the ultimate reality of Brahman itself. Brahman is that ultimate substratum. But within each of us, we have what is called Atman. And Atman is identical with Brahman. And Atman is this undifferentiated consciousness. And so from that state, you are not a person. You are not a person. This is classic Advaita Vedanta, the philosophy of non-dualism at the heart of Hinduism. And so to understand this quite a little bit more, you have to understand who you are as a person. In Sanskrit, there's a term jiva. Now, jiva means persona system, ego, subjective consciousness, the person you are in name, form, etc. So you can say, my jiva is Jason, right? Jason has these likes, these dislikes. But this is all on the Saguna Brahman level. Saguna Brahman means Brahman with qualities. Now, that may seem strange because Brahman is this ultimate substratum, this ultimate reality. But according to Advaita Vedanta, the true nature of Brahman is Noguna Brahman, which is non-dual pure consciousness. Now, this is exactly the same as Taoism because in Taoism, there's a concept of Uchi. Now, Uchi is Tao in stillness. It's the ultimate nature of reality, that nothingness, voidness, call it whatever you will, that our intellectual mind cannot conceive of. But out of the Uchi of Tao comes Tai Chi, which is Tao in motion. Now, this is exactly the same as Noguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman, because Tai Chi gives birth to yin and yang, the two polarities of the world, yin being the feminine aspect of the world, the inactive, the passive, the earth element, and yang being the active, the masculine, and the heaven element. And so you have these two interplay of opposites that create the manifest world around us. And in Taoism, in following the natural rhythms of Tai Chi, of yin and yang, you come back into harmony with the ground of being, which is Wu Chi, which is Tao and stillness. That's the origin of the universe. And so this is exactly the same as Saguna and Nuguna Brahman, because Saguna Brahman is the dynamic element of the world, the manifest world itself. It is the Shakti aspect of the world. Now, Shakti can be translated as feminine, the divine power of reality, but it's really just the active element of the impersonal Brahman. And so that's why in the Shakti aspect of reality, we have the personal gods and deities that we identify with to build a relationship with the Naguna Brahman aspect. And so Shakti is that active dimension of the Godhead of Brahman. And when we look at Shaivism, we see that Shiva's consort is Shakti, is the Shakti element of the universe. And so Shiva being a representation here of Brahman. And so on this Saguna level, this is where we are as a Jiva, a Jiva. We live in this Saguna level. And so in the quote, it says, I'm purely Brahman. 
beyond all qualities, so beyond all gunas. Now, what are the gunas? The gunas in Sanatana Dharma are three, and these three are sattva, rajas, and tamas. Sattva is the pure element. It's goodness, calmness, an element of harmony. It's what you're driving for to develop, actually, as a person in your spiritual practice. You're trying to be more sattvic. And the next element is rajas. Now, rajas is passion, being active, movement. A lot of the world live in this rajasic state of activity where the mind is very active. It's not very subtle, see? Sattva is a subtle, equanimous state within the mind where rajas is very active. A go-getter mindset where you're going out to conquer the world. Maybe it's an entrepreneurial mindset, for example. And then the next guna is Tamas, which is in relation to inertia, ignorance, and essentially laziness. Now, obviously, a lot of people are tamasic in the world, but we always should be striving towards being sattvic, having more calmness, more equanimity. And even in Buddhism, the practice of shamatha is in relation to this. Shamatha meaning tranquility. If you don't purify your mind and have a calm mind, forget about diving into the depths of your own nature and understanding Naguna Brahman. And so Dattatreya is stating here that he is purely Brahman, beyond all qualities, beyond all gunas. This is a statement coming from the Naguna Brahman level, coming from that, coming from the Atman, coming from the Atman, which is Brahman. It is that ultimate verification of the true nature of reality. That's where this quote, this statement is coming from. And when you're in that Naguna Brahman non-dual pure consciousness, then there is no birth, no death, no name, no form. You're not even this body. You're none of this. You're not even identified with any of this because it's only the jiva that is identified and attached to things on the personal level, on the shakti level, on the saguna level. And so Dr. Trey cleverly says he's never done anything, either good or bad, from this perspective. Nothing. Done nothing in life. I am the ultimate reality. I've done nothing. This is all an illusion. See, this leads into the essence of Advaita Vedanta, non-dualism, particularly Shankara's philosophy of that this whole world from the jiva perspective is an illusion from the saguna perspective and all that really exists is naguna brahman is that non-dual pure consciousness that ultimate reality and we are all a part of that but the problem is we identify with this equipment on a subjective level and we forget that there's one consciousness within all of us expressing itself as we are but we mistakenly identify with this equipment with this jiva and that eclipses that ultimate true reality which is naguna brahman and so the last line in this one Dattatreya says from that perspective there is neither bondage or liberation they don't exist for Dattatreya. They don't exist for the Avaduta. Now, the Avaduta is a wandering sadhu, one who has renounced the rules and regulations imposed on people by an external authority, such as a society, a culture, a government, or what have you. And so the Avaduta, Dattatreya here, does not need to strive for liberation or is not bound because they are verily Brahman, they are abiding in Naguna Brahman, the true reality of the world, according to Advaita Vedanta. And so from that ultimate non-dual pure consciousness, no death, no birth, you didn't do a thing. This play, Leela, has its way, is moving about doing its thing. But truly, this is not who we truly are according to the Avaduta Gita, according to the Avaduta Gita and Advaita Vedanta, is that we are verily Brahman. And if only we brought our mind and turned it inwards towards that true nature, then we would free ourselves, ironically, from the hypnosis that's been inculcated within us. And then you would realize that last line that Dr. Trey said, that neither bondage or liberation exists for you in that ultimate state. Shanti, shanti, shanti. Mm -hmm.